What is good, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of the Fundamism Podcast. I'm your host, Paul J. Long, coming to you all the way from the Fundamism Newsroom, a.k.a. the studio, a.k.a. my house. <laughs> Shout out to the sponsor, Charlie Hustle. I am rocking the Kansas City heart right now. If you don't know anything about Charlie Hustle, go to charliehustle.com to learn more. You're sure to find something that resonates with you. You know, for those of you that are tuning in today to the Fundamental Podcast, you know that our goal has been and always will be to create moments of joy, fun, and fulfillment in the lives of others. And sometimes that means that uh, you got to put yourself out there and uh, show a genuine interest. And that's the whole goal of the Fundamism Podcast is uh, to showcase what could potentially happen when you show a genuine interest in others, get out of your head, and uh, just be present. And so I am uh, I'm stoked to introduce today's guest, the third individual that I've met from Lifetime Fitness, Mr. Carl McKenzie. What's good, Carl? You know everything good. I don't have no complaints at all. Uh, I know that about you, man. That's why, uh, that's why every time I see you up at the gym uh, on Sundays uh, with Kyle blabbing his mouth and you getting it in, we'll talk about that. <laughs> uh, uh, you always, you're always a dude that's smiling. And so that is the first, uh, the first segue into our question that we asked every single guest that's ever been on the Fundamental Podcast. What do you do for fun, Carl? Well, I do a lot of things for fun as far as like if I'm if I'm not training, reading a book or working, I'm either messing with old cars or, you know, family and friends. Mm. The simple life of simplicity. I love it. So uh, so you told me this before that you're into cars <clears throat> and uh, you actually got you got a you got a pretty slick ride yourself right now, don't you? Yeah, I got a few whips. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's the what's your favorite car that you ever had and worked on growing up or to the, to this day i don't know because i just can't point out just one favorite or, get, hey, give me all of them give me all the cars you've owned throughout the day that you're proud of uh my, my 1972 impala <laughs> i got a 1972 cup that's getting an off the frame rest though 87 Monte Carlo SS, a 90 Caprice four-door and a two-door 85, a S430 Benz. I got a 2006 Tahoe Z71, 26-inch rims on it. Yeah, so that that's just a few. Goodness gracious. I'm balling on a budget over here. We're just uh, – <laughs> You obviously don't have kids because we're riding in them family whips these days over at the log household. <laughs> get, get you a van. <laughs> <laughs> so, Carl, you and I connected at Lifetime Fitness. We got a mutual buddy by the name of Kyle Haven. Uh, Kyle was a previous Fundamism podcast guest, and he opened his heart, got vulnerable, and talked a lot about his uh, battle with alcoholism. And uh, I see you guys working out every Sunday, and uh, I like to give Kyle a hard time, as do you. Uh, I mentioned earlier, you know, Kyle, and you are always flapping your gums on Sunday. I have no <laughs> idea how you guys got the muscles you got. Uh, your jaw lines are right, though, for as much talking as you do it. How do you know? How do you know Kyle Haven? First off, give me. I'm gonna give you a, a shout out to my big brother, man, Kyle <laughs> Haven. <laughs> He meant sir rap a lot. Jay Prince, Jay Prince should recruit him. But you know that that's my brother, man. We 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 met at uh 24 hour fitness. Okay. Uh Metcalf. Yep. We both was going, we we was both starting to get a jump start on our second life. As far as I was I was fresh out of the Federal Bureau of Prisons doing mm -hmm. 13 years and eight months. Wow. And I, I had met Kyle because I, I worked up the street at a warehouse. So I used to go in there and get a workout in in the morning before I had to clock into my shit. So I met him up there, and he was just now getting getting his life together. And we both clicked since mm. then. Well, you obviously have a great a great friendship, and it's fun to be around you too because uh, I believe energy begets energy, right? You get around the right crew and ultimately right. learn something Definitely. and grow accordingly. And so you're an individual that obviously places uh, self-development in a high regard. You said that you like reading. Uh, you and Kyle are always talking about ways to improve yourself. You're into fitness. Um, but, but that obviously came from 
uh, a wealth of experience in life and challenges. So tell us a little bit about growing up. So you grew up in uh, Kansas City, Missouri, and I understand uh, you ran around in the same, the same time uh, a, a pretty significant rapper was running around in KC, Mr. Tech Nine. Uh, but, and I know that you guys, uh, weren't necessarily friends or anything like that, but you ran around the same, the same crew, the same time frame. Is that an accurate statement? Yeah, that's an accurate statement, but, uh, shout out to, uh, Tech9. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Mr. Yates. Yes. All good. But, you know, as far as, as far as my growing up, I grew up in the Northeast area. Okay. The North side of Kansas City. So, yeah. So, so I, go ahead. Yeah, when I was I was going to school down there, and then I almost got kicked out of uh, school for fighting. So my mother moved in another part of the of the city, out in the in the seventies, okay. around the corner from Seventh Heaven. You know? Okay. So that was a uh, it was a neighborhood change as well as a culture shock from what I'm used to seeing. How so? It was a little more well down in the neighborhood. The good thing about the neighborhood is it's diverse. You got everybody down there that, that shares the same struggle. Black, white, Hispanic. You got Somalians. You got Asians. You got Vietnamese. You got all that down there. It's, right. it's real diverse. Italian, all that. So, and what, what, was the, what was the struggle that you referenced? And being broke? Of course. You already know. <laughs> okay. You what? already know. <laughs> you are the ghetto, man. You already <laughs> stopped playing. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, uh, I can relate to that. I mean, I grew up in a small town called Usawatomie, Kansas, but we didn't, we didn't have any money at all. Uh, we had uh, that Oldsmobile uh, Delta 88 back in the day. and uh, Delta 88, good oh, car, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. But you know the Delta 88 that has the thumbtacks on the overhead so that because the... <laughs> the headliner. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we had, Carl, we had what was called the 24 karat gold drip, which was really just rust coming from the rag top. And, uh, and the rag top was so beat up. But that was my dad's, that was my dad's ride. And uh, I remember, I've told this story before, for those of you tuning in, uh, but my mom used to make me go get gas in the Delta 88, you know, pump, pump number five, had a Ziploc baggie of uh, uh, nickels, dimes, and quarters, putting $5 in. So, um, oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, we grew up on, uh, <laughs> I mean, hey, mom, what's for dinner? There's cereal in there. I mean, we ate cereal on the reg. Uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't have a ton of money. We, we uh, you know, I would say that we didn't necessarily go through a significant struggle, but um, we didn't have anything to compare it to. You know what I mean? Check like, it out. I'm going to give you a, the, 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 some of the, I'm going to brief you on the struggle. Give it to me. You know, I ain't an expert, but I'm, I'm just, I can only speak for my struggles. You know, sure. sometimes when, you know, you didn't really have, you didn't really have Kool-Aid or anything like that. So you may, you had sugar water or if not, <laughs> You'll make a wish sandwich. A wish sandwich is you wish you had some meat and cheese on this. <laughs> you know, you'll put you you'll make sugar sandwiches, all that type of stuff. Sometimes when the light get lights get cut off, you gotta, you know, like light candles. Oh. And, and, it, and if the gas ain't on, open the oven. You know, you I, it's real, man. Yeah, when you got sure. yeah, it, it, it's for real. But the wish you know, sandwich, yeah. The wish sandwich. <laughs> I wish I had something on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So you, you and the family, uh, you're new to the block, uh, down the street from seventh heaven, very diverse neighborhood. The one thing everybody's got in common is, uh, we don't have much, right? We got it was different. Day. It was different. That, nah, that was from the Northeast area where okay. the struggle was. Okay. And, and then when we moved out there in the seventies out South, that's when it was like, it was a shock. Like, damn, everybody around here is quiet. It ain't. So they had stuff. They were yeah, they, the, okay. Yeah, that, was, that was out south. That was the south side of the Yeah, they had. <laughs> so, so they had stuff, but uh, you found yourself getting in trouble there in the new neighborhood, didn't you? Most definitely. What happened? <laughs> what, what happened was. What uh, happened was. <laughs> <laughs> so, Carl, uh, to whatever extent you're willing to share, talk to us a little bit about your journey. So, uh, you come from a family that doesn't have much. You're trying to find a way to fit in. And uh, from what I understand, you, you get into some trouble. What happened? Right. You know, in, a, in the household that I grew up in, it was uh, my mother. I tip my hat to her. Rest in peace, Connie McKenzie. I love you and, and miss you dearly. She raised me and both of my sisters by herself. 
Mm. You know, so I can't complain about none of that. So, but other than that, you know, we ain't always have it, but whatever we, whatever she can make happen, she she made it happen. Sure. And we didn't have to want for nothing, basically. Mm. Uh, and so your your mom obviously has passed. How long ago is that? Almost three years. Almost three years? Yeah, almost three years. Man, well, I'm sorry to hear about your loss. You know, obviously, uh, so you don't know much about me, but I, I lost a father and lost several people that mean a lot to me, especially when you got somebody that has really helped establish your personal foundation or the F, uh, what I call fun. Uh, the acronym. It's it's really trying. But uh, ultimately, I know that your mother was proud to see you come from where you came from uh, to ultimately make something out of yourself. So so you're, you're running the streets, you get into some things, uh, you, uh, you start getting into trouble. What kind of trouble were you getting in? You know, the... You, you see, the I'm original. like... I'll, no, I'll, no, 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 original. Hey, no, just, no, just original, you know, on the hook, man. Yeah, I got a little yeah. piece of fish on there for you. trying to give me the bite. <laughs> <laughs> the original, uh, you know, the original black top street stuff. Yeah. You know? So you're a... Drug, you're a dr- drug activity. Yes. Not using, selling. Right. Yeah. You know, toting pistols, but I always been into the uh into the boxing, basketball, and football. I've been doing that since I was eleven years old, all the way until I got out of high school. You know, and still kind of active now. So that's what kind of what that, I think that's what led to the fitness part of of, of that. But, sure. Yeah. Now was, uh, you say you still dabble in boxing, basketball, and football. Don't get it twisted. I know that you're a confident fellow, but you get on this court, I'll mess around and get a triple double on you. That's cool. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's cool. You know, you know, you know, sometimes the grace take a fall. You know what I'm saying? You gotta take losses. All right. So, so to to stop beating around the bush, you're you're slanging, right? So you're out there making this money. Yeah, I'm doing uh, my thing. You're, you're making a reputation for yourself. Uh, people respect you in the streets uh, because for multiple reasons, uh, you, you carry yourself with confidence, but you carry yourself doing the right thing. Uh, when I say the right thing, meaning that uh, even when you're doing the wrong thing, there is a code of conduct, uh, right? Is that, is that accurate? Most definitely it's a code. Look at, look at me like I know and, what the hell I'm and, talking about. And you got to stick to it. So that's why, you know, I know a lot of people in, in the streets and all that stuff and still know them to this day and respect whatever. And they respect me because I was I was never a, 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 a trouble starter or anything like that. I always handled my business at the same time. And then when, when stuff got crazy, when the feds got me, I kept it solid. Mm. I didn't have nothing to say, and I knocked my time out, and took it on the chin. That chapter of my life is gone, and that's and that's what that that that's really what saved me, kinda, you know, and 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 to grow up to really put my reflect on my past, put it with the present, and shape them all my choices for the future on how I'm living now. For sure, no issue. And, uh, and that's why it's, it's so, um, it's been so enlightening to talk with you. I mean, you're the third guest that I've had on the, uh, fundamental podcast that I met from lifetime and each one is just like an onion, right? Like there's just so many stories. It just, it makes me think Carl, like how many people in this planet have stories that we have nothing, we, we know nothing about because we never ask the questions or we don't show sure. genuine interest, right? They, so they got it. Some is more extreme than others. Exactly. And some people have like a jaw dropping like moment <laughs> when you tell when you tell them about your story and they'll look at you like, damn, I don't see that. Right. Because cause you gotta be modest and humble and plus that ain't you don't wear your story on your sleeve. You gotta For ask. Sure. For sure. And know. and to your point, like your past doesn't define who you are, but it helps shape who you become, right? Most definitely. And so as a result of that, you know, going back to your past, what made you turn to, you know, first of all, I admire the fact that you never got into drugs, but you did deal in drugs, right? And well, yeah. so you learned a lot from that. But why did you why did you go down that path? Why did you start slanging? Well, you know, your 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 mother can't teach you how to be a man anyway. Plus when I'm out there, I'm doing I'm boxing. 
playing sports and all that type of stuff. And, you know, I got uncles and stuff, too, that stayed on my ass. But other than that, I was just like, shit, I got to, I got tired of wearing XJ 900s and, and mine can just do the, the minimal. I got, I got to get, you know, I got to. And plus, my whole thing was me, me getting into the game, period, was like, I got to pay for my college education. And then at the same time, I want to take care of my mom and make sure she good and my sisters and all that and still have some money and do what I do. Mm. Basically. Tell us about the day that you got caught. <laughs> the feeds. <laughs> hey, something else. You yeah, first man, you um, they're listening right now to you. So. I, I ain't worried about it. I'm, I'm gooch. <laughs> I'm a citizen, man. I pay taxes, got a passport. I'm, hey, I, I ain't doing that no more. But uh, I think that's the title of our podcast, Carl. I'm Gucci. <laughs> yeah, I'm going. <laughs> but other than that, though, yeah, when that 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 day was kind of, it was, it was a jaw dropping moment. <laughs> hey, give it to me. I see you in your feelings right now. Because I had, because I had my uh, you know, I had a power washing business and, and stuff like that. So I was that was for me to make my exit out of the streets. Okay. You know, I, that was me to make my exit out of the streets. But that shit's so addictive, man. That you getting you getting that money in them large amounts and being able to just do what you want to do when you want to, however you want to, and et cetera. You know? So yeah, so when 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 that happened, when they ran when they kicked up in my house, they did the door. They did so the they beat, so they they so they beat down the door. Did you know? Did you have did you guess? Did you see this coming at all? Not really. Okay. I didn't really see it because you uh, the way I move, I move real low key. You know, they would they said they couldn't get no no sales on me. They couldn't do none of that type of stuff. But what it was is was it was a weak link, and they flipped that weak link. Mm. You know, so which yeah. kind of goes back to you, to what you said earlier. Like you, even when you did get caught up, you didn't snitches get stitches. Obviously, so I'm you, not gonna do that. I get money shoot first, and I'll say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so they beat in the door then what happens they, they you know they kick in the door throw the little um flashbang or all that stuff in there and you know they ran up in there so they they got me cuffed and stuff like that so i'm like uh i'm not tripping because this house is in my name plus I, I'm, I'm really legal yeah so i'm like i ain't i didn't fumble to where <laughs> y'all be doing this right so they they kick up in the house. They they cuff me and all that. So they like yeah. Uh, so what's in the safe? <laughs> so, man, I'm looking at them like only thing that's in there is probably like ten grand, and I got an AK-47 back there. Jeez, that's to protect my my house. You know what I'm right. saying? I don't I don't I don't I didn't keep nothing here. Yeah. I don't I don't I don't I don't do a number two where I sleep. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. But other than that, so be respectful. <laughs> yeah, so it, it, it is what it is on, on that end, but they, they did all of that and then they ran they 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 checked the safe in my room and all that come out with the money. Mm. And, and this is what this is what I keep at home. This ain't and then they they bring out the AK. That's mine. What what you gonna do? That ain't right. no but a, a gun and some money. What what the fuck? It ain't gonna right. really do nothing. So they going because I'm gonna I'm a rewind it back just a little bit. The yep. weak link, his his he 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 a pretty boy, you know. He like he was he was selling marijuana at first, and then he crossed over into the into the real man's game. But he I'm always fighting his battles, and he older than me. And he a pretty boy, so I I, I knew damn well he wasn't cut for this type of shit. <laughs> oh, excuse me. He wasn't cut for this type of life. You're good. Keep going. He wasn't cut for this type of life. So, you know, his uh baby mama put him out. So I'm like, okay, you can stay at my house for 60 days, but you got to get up out of here in 60 days. Cause I'm out of town. I'm doing my little power washing thing and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm moving. So while I'm out of town or I'm not at home, he got people coming over to the house and doing this out the house, but I'm not knowing that the feds are not ready to flip this guy. Mm. So I guess it's just this is just the uh the yellow brick road to get me. To set me up to get me in, you know, that type of stuff. But they right. could never get no sales on me or anything like that. So 
they come up in the house, they go go through my say. So now we fast forward back to the they got me cuffed. Then they go up in the room where he was at, and they come out with crack cocaine. And I'm looking at this dude like just giving him that look, like, but I ain't saying nothing like right. Dude, and then I'm thinking because the, the house is in my name, right. all of that. Yeah. So they come out with it. They like, well, yeah, you know, you're gonna get time for this. I'm like, man, I don't care about none of that. Whose is it? I said, you know, we ain't doing that. Take me, take me downtown or where, wherever you're gonna take me, because I ain't got nothing to say to you. So in your mind at this moment, you're not really feeling as though you're in trouble. Like you, cause you, cause you don't, cause that stuff's not yours and you think everything's legal at this point. Like what's going through your mind right now in this moment? What's going through my mind is this house is in my name and they came out with this shit, even though I'm getting that case. Yeah. Plus y'all kicking in this door cause y'all already done flipped this door. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah. So they, so they take you downtown and what happened? Yeah. Oh, the, the cold part about it, KCPD kicked in the house. As soon as they secured me and did all that, who you think walk in? The alphabet. The alphabet <laughs> boys, the feds come in like, oh, get you. We need, damn. Okay. Well, I know I, I'm about to take in this scenery. So as soon as they take me outside and run through the house or whatnot and try to see if it's, if anything else is in there, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to take in this, this landscape. I'm going to take in this grass, take in these trees, look at the sky and all this, because I know I ain't going to see this shit for a minute. Wow. You for real thought like that? Yeah, really. You got to know. When you when you, when you you in that type of life or anything like that, you know the consequences. Everything you do in life is based on the decision that you got to make. Hmm. I wasn't complaining when I was getting the money doing what I was doing or anything like that, but, you know, Jeez. And plus, I, I ain't got nothing to say, so do what you're going to do. Right. So to make a short story long, you caught a case. And uh, that, as a result of that, you got locked up. Is it that, that scenario, that, that experience that, that got you locked up? No, nah, I'm going to tell you what it is. <laughs> <laughs> what it is is the, the weak link, you know, or should I say master splinter, we all know who Master Splinter is. Yeah. So when he crossed over, he got to he got to sell it to a federal agent. You know, and that's where they flipped him. And he told them that I was a mastermind behind it, and I had him selling the drugs. That's when they yeah, that's when they flipped me. So that's how all that came along. Jeez. So you ended up getting, and you said it earlier. Uh, forgive my ignorance. How much time did you spend in the pen? Well, they gave me 170 months. 170 months. 14 years, bro. And then I did. A, <laughs> then I, I did 13 years and eight months on. What was? So, had you ever been to jail before? Yeah, I done did. I done, I done been like downtown, or you know, 20 hour investigations and stuff like that. they been in like look. Little stints like that, just like you know, because I wasn't really in no jail, like because I was stuck <laughs> <laughs> in the movement. I, I, I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, so, I was, I was how AI did Jordan when he came in the game. I was crossing, <laughs> breaking their ankles. Why you, you gotta bring up old stuff? Uh, yeah. AI did have a crossover though, the killer crossover. So. You're, so you're day one of jail, if you remember, like like the pen. I like, already what, know. What's I already going? know. I already know what what, what was going to transpire. But by right. me, but by me being a straight up solid guy, you know somebody going to test you when you get in in there. Yeah, you ain't got nothing but you know you got you got different personalities you're dealing with for sure. You got over a thousand personalities you're dealing with. So they immediately try to test you. Most did you already know. When you when you go into uh, the Federal Bureau of Prisons, I wasn't in no I, I wasn't in no no minimum security or low right. security. They had me in USPs and FCI. So basically medium high and high security. So 
guys in there don't 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 play that. They don't mess with it. They don't mess with master splinters. <laughs> you know, they don't do the uh the Jeffrey Epstein's. They don't do none of that. Uh uh-uh. uh So you either you you either straight up or you not. You know? So if if your if your paperwork ain't right, you you're not gonna be on the compound like that. Wow. So this so somebody tried to test you, obviously, based Most on Most definitely. So so what happens as a result of that? Like <clears throat> one person tests you and then you you earn your you earn your stripes and no one else try what how tell me about that process. It's the paperwork. If you come <laughs> in there, if you come in there and you ain't and you're not a snitch, a child molester or anything like that. Then you you good, Fine. you know. But you still got them knuckleheads. that's gonna try to test you because they this all this testosterone in right. this in this in this little area. All these personalities and people think they got something to prove. Goodness, you know. How, so how do you make that, it through thirteen years and eight months? Like what got you through that those times? Like what? I'm so fascinated. And you're such like <laughs> you're such a dude. You were we we're, were talking before we came on here. And uh, you're like, yeah, if you ask me something, I'm just, and I don't want to answer, I'll just be like, next question. Off the, off the muscle, I got to do it. <laughs> I feel like I got to be so direct with my line of questioning to get you to answer the damn question. Uh, so how do you make it through 13 years and eight months? How make it? Yeah. It's, 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 it's easy. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it, it just depends on the individual, man. Only the strong survive. You got in that situation, you got guys that join gangs because they scared to death, or that's what they was doing before they got up in there, you know. And then you got some that 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 do drugs, you got some that go to pill line because they mentally can't deal with the time that they was given, and this is how they want to just do their time hot. Mm-hmm. You know, and then you got some that indulge in other activities. For sure. That ain't that ain't hey. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But other than that, <laughs> that's how I go. So that's how they that's how they doing it. But uh, what what kept me afloat was uh reading books, you know, staying staying in tune, staying in tune with the world as the years go by without like being on the phone all the time and stuff like that. Just reading, watching the news, training, and basically breaking myself down and reinventing myself and coming with a plan and apply apply my plan to my everyday living quarters while I'm in prison. So don't wait to apply my plan when I got out because if one thing don't go your way, you're going to get discouraged and go back to the old shit you was doing. Mm. So this, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, as a Fundamism podcast listener, you know what Fundamism is, the fundamentals of a fun and optimistic lifestyle, right? So Mm -hmm. there are things that we do to get us out of our head, to improve our mental space, to challenge ourselves, to get better. And now this is, this is the story right here. Like, we oftentimes, we make excuses for the world that we're living in. And we say, well, you know, if I had a better situation, if I had more money, if I you know, wasn't dealt this bad hand, whatever it may be, life would be a little bit better. The reason why I wanted Carl to come on here is because for 13 years and eight months, this dude uh, was in a routine. He basically had somebody else telling him what to do, when he was going to do it. And it was solely on him to keep his mind right. Me and, and so- everybody else that was in there. For sure, 100%. But so what I heard you say is your fundamentals were your fundamentals of a fun, optimistic lifestyle. So you had to stay in tune what was going on on the outside. So you stayed abreast of the news, you watched the news, you read a lot. And what I, what I love about what you just said is I wasn't waiting for myself to get out to build my plan. I was building my plan throughout that time. So then when I did get out, I hit the ground running. What was Most your definitely, plan? yes. What was your plan? What did that look like? My plan, you know, I broke myself all the way down. I replaced my bad habits with good habits and all of that. Mm. You know, and then I applied my plan to my everyday life while I was in the concrete jungle, which was the penitentiary. Sure. I, I, was, applying, I was applying my plan while I was in there, day to day. So when I got out, it's, I make it look easy to people that's like, damn. But I've been applying this plan since this is a, li- a new lifestyle for me, so I might as well apply it right now. And keep applying. So when you talk about this plan, obviously you said replacing bad habits with good ones. Yeah. Uh, give us some examples. So I know obviously fitness is something significant to you. That's a, that's an escape for me. It's a, 
you know, a lot of people look at fitness sometimes, especially for dudes like you or me, and they think this is a, a vanity thing or, you know, we're, tr we're trying to get swolled up for a reason. But for me, it's just a, it's a mental challenge. Let's, mental let's, give, let's give them a nose flash. Yeah. That ain't no, I'm not caught up in the vanity on nothing. I don't care what a person say about me, what they think about me. They can get, you know, next to the index finger, <laughs> you know, and they can kiss where the sun don't shine. You get what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I'm going to do me. It's not going to stop my success, and it's not going It's not gonna take no zeros off my bank account. Right. And it ain't going to stop me taking care of family, friends, and, and all of that. I'm living my simple, good life without no issues. Have you – so that, that concept of uh, not caring what others think, Carl, is a challenge for a lot of people, right? Um, is that something that you've – that you've always been blessed with, like not I always, I always been like that. Either yeah. you roll with me or get ran over. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you think that people that get caught up in the thought of what others think, like, do you think that that's curable? Do you think that that's something that that people could release themselves of? It all depends on the individual and how much of a tight lock the vanity got on their brain. Hmm. It's a great you know, point. Yeah, for sure. That's kind of that's kind of like a. All right, I'm going to give you a scenario. Like, you got, like, say, you got a mother and father and a grandfather. A grandfather done taught the, the, the children their views and all of that in their era. Now, the young life, the grandchildren, the third generation, they trying to, the parents are trying to teach them what, they're, what their parents taught them, and they're not going for it. Like how today's world is on on the racism and all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, the young life now ain't going for it. Like, nah, because you can't teach me that because they they seeing people for who they really were. They got really actually got black friends. They got, well, I can say not just black. They got people with melanin in right. it. <laughs> all that. You know, they got they that, that that don't look like them. Sure. And and they like, damn. They really, they really cool down to earth people. Like, damn, I was, I've been misled. You got right. some people that that was taught that, and they really get the linking up and being friends with 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 the opposition or whatnot, quote unquote, what what it's called, and they get to see who that person really is. Mm. Damn, man, so, I've been getting lied to all this time. For sure, and it, I think it goes back to uh, to something that we've alluded to multiple times, like. You could learn a lot through experience. And so if you, if you always walk through life believing what everybody else is telling you instead of experiencing your life for yourself, uh, then a lot of people are going to draw up your narrative. So that stuff's going on so much right now, Carl. So many people are spouting off things, opinions, thoughts, hate speech, whatever it may be. And they're they not don't even... Know they, they don't know nothing. Right. And it's, not, and it's not even their language. Like, you know... When all they're doing is talking like, you know, CNN or Fox News or, or their neighbor down the street talking points. You know what I'm saying? Like, like tell me your perspective. And you, you find out real quick, Carl, when you start asking questions. Because people aren't, used to, people aren't used to ask, like, hearing questions. Like, no. you, you say something and they all, oh, Carl's being Carl. But all they, used to, they used to be in yes men, yes. told anything. I'm going to tell you this. The generation now, them people that, that you was just talking about, that individual genre, you know what, <laughs> what, what, what you was just talking about is they used to, they're, they're not used to getting told no. There was born, there was born privilege or with a lightweight silver spoon in their mouth, and they ain't never been through nothing. Mm. And this is what I tell my, my big brother. My big brother done been through a lot of stuff. Mr. Mr. Kyle, yeah. he done been through a lot. But I told him, I was like, bro, you been through a lot, and I'm proud of you, and you did what you did. I give you a thumbs up all day. I said, but you will never go through the stuff that I went through just on the strength that you don't look like me, man. For sure. It, which brings up a great topic that I want to talk to you briefly about, Carl, because I know that you have some thoughts about it. But uh, Kyle and I were just talking about this uh, last week in that, you know, individuals and you say, you know, with a silver spoon in your mouth, again, going back to your point earlier, this could be all demographics of people, like all different walks of life. Right. But the common theme is 
people that haven't seen challenge, right? Yeah. And so uh, if you haven't seen challenge, it's very difficult for you to learn to appreciate uh, the struggle. And, and even on the other side, learn to appreciate the greatness that life is. I think it was somebody once said, uh, Walt Disney or something, I don't know if, if, uh, if every moment was magical, we wouldn't have magic moments, right? And so going back to all the stuff that you've been through, I guarantee you it's helped shape more appreciation for life. Most definitely. I, I saw this, uh, I saw this uh, Instagram post the other day I want to read to you because it kind of falls in line with uh, what we talked about. And one more thing, not to cut you off, no, to, that, to that genre we was just talking about, I got a, a personal message from Carl McKenzie. Quit <laughs> clout chasing. If you ain't never been through nothing, fall back and take a back seat because you ain't on nothing. Because as soon as it pop off, y'all ain't ready for that. Clout chasing. Clout chasing. Yeah. Uh, I feel like that's, yeah. that's yeah, that like, clout chase. That's society, though. Like, we are so defined by the amount of likes that we get now. Not me. <laughs> I like them zeros, baby. I think they can multi. <laughs> <laughs> so, Carl, listen to this. I, I saw this the other day on, on uh, Instagram. It says, two brothers were raised by an alcoholic father. One grew up to be an alcoholic, and when asked what happened, he said, I watched my father. The other grew up and never drank once in his life. And when asked why, he said, I watched my father. Your perspective will determine your future. Oh, what I love about that is, right. So, so you got two people raised by the same individual. One person looks at him and says, I'm going to be this way because my dad was this way and I didn't have a choice. You got another person that looks at it and says, I'm going to be the opposite of my dad because I saw what he became and I don't want to be that. So let's talk about your plan. Cause, uh, so you're, you're in the pen, you're replacing bad habits with good habits. Yeah. Uh, it's reading, it's working out, it's diet. Like I, I know that you're really big on diet too. Yeah. Where, where'd that come from? You don't even eat red meat from what I understand. Yeah. I ate that in so long. So you, you don't know, do that, barbecue. That, that, that came, oh, yeah, I'll do the barbecue. Don't do me like that. It depends <laughs> on what it is. <laughs> it just depends on what it is. But as far as like the diet goes, you know, I I, I used to look back on, on family members and loved ones and friends and stuff, and they ate a lot of beef and stuff like that, got high blood pressure and hypertension, all of that type of stuff, and, that, and, that, and that's damaging to your health, you know? Yeah. And... I always been like that. I think since me being in a boxing gym since I was 11 years old and playing sports and doing all of that, kind of the boxing gym really got me locked in on the discipline part of whatever, all the way from back then till now. That boxing, it got a, it got a, it got a lock on the discipline, got a lock on my brain to make to how I'm living right now. Sure. So going back to a, a topic that you kind of brought up, you. So you you broach the subject of racism and and obviously uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff going on in society these days and I know you and Kyle, Kyle just recently got into a discussion that I inserted myself into we were talking about <laughs> Black Lives Matter and police brutality and all that stuff. What what's your and I know we could talk for, about this for hours, but like as all this stuff is happening uh with george floyd and, and all this stuff's going on all the protests what's going through your mind how do you see all that first off i'm gonna tell you how i see it but rest in peace george floyd and uh, and, and condolences to the to the floyd family and all of that mm -hmm. you know should no mother ever lose a son like that for sure you know and uh and no should no family lose a should lose a sibling or or whatever like that. Sure. But with, with that being said is um I'm kind of lost for words on that one. That's all right. You know what I mean? So well, so I know that you had said that uh in the gym, and and I'm paraphrasing that that stuff's been happening for so long that you it, okay, yeah, we back to that so, to it, right? It, it's been happening, it's been happening forever in the black community, it's been happening. And the Black Lives Matter, don't get it, don't get it twisted or anybody, the listeners or whatever. The Black Lives Matter movement is only for 
police brutality and racial equality. That's all we want is to be equal. It doesn't have nothing to do with disrespecting the flag or no no patri- no patriotic stuff, period. Right. It got nothing to do to it. We just want to be equal. Go on, Tree. Let, let me get mine. <laughs> Without no discrimination. For sure. Because I'm I make all the I make all the qualifications and requirements. Right. Damn, let me get on. But other than that, though, uh, with that, yeah, it, it's been happening, man. And then now, like now, uh, now Caucasian people and all that type of stuff, people that's that's uh in gated communities or you know already was privileged. Now that it shed a light on it and see how how they doing stuff. But that was always a subject that they didn't never talk about because they ain't never been through it or never been discriminated in their life. If they ever got just discriminated to the slightest degree, they gonna raise hell, right? Mm-hmm. They be to call Andy Alcock to do a fucking investigation. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just saying. So this topic is such a it's such an interesting one to me because I I grew up in a predominantly white uh, town. Uh, with very few black individuals. I mean, we had we had three black males that graduated. Damn, there weren't no black people in there, then. Is that? That's what <laughs> <laughs> but so my point is though, like like my boy Charlie Brown, Cece Brown. I mean, we we went through it together, and I would see how he was treated differently. Most and different. so I, I got a lot of folks that uh, that navigate the the spiritual space, like spirituality and stuff like that, and and sometimes they get really deep, right? And, and one of the things that that uh, an individual tells me regularly is, if you haven't experienced it, does it really exist? And so he challenged me. He challenges me to 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 think about does racism exist? And I, and I get heated, Carl. I'm like, hell yeah, racism exists. Like, what kind of stupid question is that? And then he'll say, well, have you ever experienced racism? And I'll say, well, I've seen racist, racist behavior, but I've never experienced it because, like, again, to your point, it's, it's a different, I will never be able to walk a mile in your shoes. Hell, I'll never be able to walk two and a half feet in your shoes. Right, right, so right. How, could I, how could I say, how could I say for certainty what it feels like? But what I can say is it exists. And I know for 100% certainty that people are treated differently in this world, whether you got a, uh, what, whether you got, uh, religious beliefs, uh, political beliefs, uh, a certain, uh, demographic of people, whether you're poor, whether you're rich, whether (laughs) people look at people differently, like all the time, we see it every day at the gym. And so my point is, um, Ignorance is at an all-time high right now. Super all-time high. And so, Carl, I, I wonder oftentimes, like, is it really at an all-time high or is just everybody so more – we're so more proud in expressing our ignorance? <laughs> I'm going to give it to you uh, like this. Like, like say, like, like the, the, the statement you just made, you was like, hell, yeah, you get heated. Yeah, you're right to get heated, but you witness racism from a secondary point of view. Yes, sir. From a from from a different set of eyes, but who was being dis- discriminated against was was your age boom cool. Like, right. like, damn, this is crazy. But For that's sure. that's why you got 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 the podcast because you advocate when you sure. when you you never know where your adv- your advocates come from. Mm-hmm. It's a Seriously, great and you know, to the end of the to from from now, and even I would say like the last five years, you know, I've always been about bringing, uh, laughter, uh, but I wasn't very, um, I wasn't very deliberate crawl in my actions. Like I knew, I knew that I wanted to create, uh, a better time, like in an environment after I left than, than when I came into it, but I didn't know what it looked like. Right. And so for the last five years and, and now until the day I die, I mean, my goal is to create moments of joy, fun, and fulfillment for others. And that includes, when I say others, I'm saying everybody. Like, I feel like love, equality, and kindness, these should just be languages that we speak no matter what you look like or how you feel. So let's talk about your turnaround, like the moment okay. that you, you got out and you decided, because having a game plan, Carl, and actually instituting a game plan, 
uh, when faced with the reality, those are two different things. So you get out of the pen and then what? <laughs> the answer is application. Yes. You gotta apply your plan for sure. to your life. I don't care. I'm not gonna wait till I get on the street to apply my plan. I'm gonna apply it in here. So when I get out, it's, it's it's normal. It's a it's so you never skipped a beat when you got out of the pen, like you your eye was on the prize the whole time and and you and you you realized that you weren't you weren't gonna live that life anymore. Yeah, most definitely. Or 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 go back to or go back to the concrete jump. Mm. Nah, we ain't doing that. Tell me about like looking back in retrospect, and I know that uh, you said this before, like your past helped shape your future. Yeah. Uh, but you weren't ever crying back then, and you're not crying now. Do you have like looking back at some of the stuff that you did? Do you ever get in your feelings and like think about not regrets, but like you know, damn, why, why or how or feel bad? Uh -huh. I kind of I, I kind of start laughing like <laughs> I get to thinking back like <laughs> damn I was on some hot shit right. I don't know why the, what the fuck was you thinking right you know that's part of being young man and and evolving and transition and coming with a plan and applying it yeah you know, for sure. with, with me with me with that with that situation it really saved me mm -hmm. I'd have been shot stabbed penitentiary. You know that type of stuff. So for real, that concrete jungle, what, what, that, that time, it saved me. Cause mm -hmm. if I would have kept going at the rate I was going, either somebody would have killed me, or it would have been the other way around. Right, guys. As you're listening to Carl's story, and as we start to wrap up today, like the theme that I'm consistently hearing <laughs> from Carl and others is that when you look at challenge and you say, "Gosh, damn it, another one and another one." And another one, like DJ Khaled said. I was like, you DJ Khaled. <laughs> when we look at challenge and, and you get in that victim's mentality, it's, it's easy to say things could be different. But the one thing that I've noticed about people that have made the most uh, of, of life or are the most happy are individuals that realize that these challenges have helped shape uh, their their life and their experience to a manner or in a manner that allows them to be happier because when you're going through challenge it's hard when you see it and and like you're drowning or you're treading water but the moment that you get out of it you look back and, and you're better as a result and you appreciate things more uh as an as an addition or as, you know as an extension of you going through that stuff so carl if you have a let's say one one child one adolescent one individual that's going through it right now is is uh is hearing you and your story and uh they're in the midst of doing the wrong thing how would you how would you convey any kind of wisdom to them in hopes of potentially steering them down a better path i would i would tell them don't do it <laughs> don't, don't, do, don't yeah seriously though don't do it because it's gonna cost you way more in the end when you do that mm. you know because because you might not come back from it you hurting your family you're hurting yourself why would you just just save the the grief and all of that that stuff but at the same time just go with what you know don't 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 get caught up with trying to be the Joneses or keep up with the Joneses or anything like that. You are on this earth for a reason. Your destiny, yours. What you like and what you do, stick to it. It's going to be hardships and bumps in the road. You know, so, I, yeah, go with what you go with what your heart tell you to do and as far as what your dreams are. Always pursue that. And do you don't think let nobody throw you off your, off your game whatsoever. So is it, it's, I mean, this is probably a stupid question, but does, is it really just boiled down to uh, money and the ego? Like, cause there's folks that know they're doing the wrong thing. They, you know, they're into drugs or they're into, you know, doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing. Um, and they know that the risk is, is there of losing their life or God forbid, uh, in addition, like, obviously they're so selfish, remove themselves uh, you know, some of the stuff that they're doing is putting others in harm's way, but they just don't care. Um, 
What is that? Why do you think that is? Like what? Self selfishness, ego, and that money is a is a bad. You know, it yeah. it it'll, it'll alter your decisions. It depends on the individual though. Sure. So with that being said, like you know. You, this can be your best friend. You can grow up with him for 20 years. A, a, a certain amount of money get involved. He'll, he'll get off in that tall grass and snake you out. For sure. No matter what it is. Just so he can obtain that a materialistic thing. That, and that's crazy. So now uh, you're living life with a whole lot more smiles than you, than you had previously. I was smiling then. I know. But now you're smiling and you, and you could rest easy knowing that you're doing the right thing. Uh, Living my life like it's golden. <laughs> let's go. You know, <laughs> let's do so, it. So uh, let's end with what wonderful things is Carl getting into now? Like how how are you uh, how are you creating revenue? Uh, how are you how are you able to uh, to get all these fine whips uh, been, and afford been, and afford a membership to Lifetime Fitness because that stuff is ridiculous. I've I've been there. <laughs> but you know what? I'm, I'm gonna tell you this, man. From my past, from my past life, you know, I I don't have money. So mm -hmm. you know, you 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 get accustomed to a certain lifestyle. But now that that I ain't living that life and and been not living that life, you know, I, I need some equivalent to it. So I've been my own boss for almost four years. I do lawn care and live. That's my independent personal training thing, you know. So. That's that's what I'm doing. And Where then you when I people out, I didn't even uh, know. That. I know it's a lot of stuff you don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> All you gotta do is unless man. I unless I ask the direct question, <laughs> I'm never gonna know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but with that, I got access to little exercise rooms and stuff like that. Basically, you really don't need no gym or anything like that. Your body is your own gym. You really don't really need no weights. All you need is a little bit of resistance, pull-ups, push-ups, dips, stability, mobility, and, and with all that comes in doing. So you you gonna be in the game like EA Sports. I know exactly uh, what you mean. Listen, I'll tell you what. If the Fed's trying to run up on me, uh, the only thing I'm gonna get is this unlicensed. Look at this. Look at that. Oh, that's lift, baby. But you, but you, but you ain't a fella. So you, you, you <laughs> carry know. the gun. These ain't uh, these. These are two unlicensed. Uh, these are two unlicensed guns right here. You, you carry them to his car. You ain't got no <laughs> <laughs> hey, last question, uh, Kyle. I don't know if you used to or still do. Do you uh, you dabble in car, uh, car wash as well? You got a car wash? No, nah, no, I don't have a car wash. Right. I got, I got, uh, I got friends that got uh, detail, detail gotcha. shops, gotcha, businesses right. and stuff like that. So, yeah, with that, you know. But I'm most definitely coming back to the to the podcast. So we need to go and set up another one because I know you didn't get to ask all what you needed to ask. So on the second round, you can. No, want. I got – so the deal is I got a million questions in the hopper that I want to ask. I'm trying to be protective. I, I Listen, I, I try to earn your respect so I can ask you back. <laughs> respect is earned. You hear me. Hey. <laughs> Carl, I look forward to seeing you at the gym. I appreciate you being on uh, in closing. I'm so proud of, of, of uh, coming through what you came through and living a better life as a result. And, uh, you know, Kyle's blessed to have you as a friend, and it's cool to see you guys prop each other up and be accountability buddies. Yeah. So keep doing you, my friend. You blessed to have me as your friend. You know? Oh, oh, we're friends now. We've been friends. You okay. just, like, that's that, see, that's that, that's that Joe called life. You, know, <laughs> you can't hey, be I, doing it. See, you. Charlie Hustle, I love you, man. Red KC. <laughs> It's Kansas City all day. Man. You don't even. <laughs> you talk about Joko life. You don't know where I live. I'm from Miami <laughs> County, son. Represent the streets. <laughs> where at? <laughs> Anyways, hey, to the Fundamental Podcast listener, we greatly appreciate your support. We couldn't do this without you. Keep tuning in. Go in. Uh, have some fun today, uh, and potentially create some fun in the lives of others, as Carl has done for me today. We love you. Until we see you on the flip side, deuces. Doses.